Welcome to our Good Friday worship service. I invite you, as you are home, to have a lit candle in front of you for this service. It is a series of readings both from Isaiah and from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26 and 27. There will be seven series of readings, and as we read each series, one of the seven candles will be extinguished. Your, I invite you to have your candle lit, and then when we are close to the end of this service and the last center candle is extinguished, I invite you to extinguish yours. That way we are united in that um, light and darkness. The ancient service of tenebrae dates back to the early years of the church. The Latin word tenebrae means shadows. It depicts the flight of the disciples and the approaching crucifixion through the extinguishing of candles. The moment of total darkness recalls the hours Christ was in the tomb. In this setting, the veiled cross is a symbol of our mourning for the sins of the world. We begin. Almighty God, we ask that you look upon your family with mercy, your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on a cross. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that our Almighty Father guide it and gather it together. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of your church. Help it to persevere in faith. Proclaim your name and bring salvation to people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way of salvation. Almighty God, enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to receive the truth of the gospel. Help us, your people, to grow in love for one another and to grasp more fully your mystery, and so become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts, so that all might live in true peace and freedom. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us also pray that God, the Almighty Father, may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give strength to those who help, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease. Heavenly Father, 
It is your glory always to have mercy. Bring back all who have erred or strayed from your ways. Lead them again to embrace in faith the truth of your word and hold it fast. Let your loving embrace surround us all, especially those who are weak, suffering, or sick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. Then one of them, twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, He took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it has been written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom.
was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here. Stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for a second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand to his sword drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scripture be fulfilled? Which say, I, which say it must happen in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, but you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. So shall he startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they shall see, and that which they have not heard they shall understand. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. Some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you also are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. And at that moment, the cock crowed. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said before the cock crows, You will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. 
like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to put, to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer not even a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort with him. They stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat at him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him.
Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put a charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided them, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits were crucified with him also, taunted him in the same way. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. 
Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women also were there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. He was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is the day of the preparation. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. 
So they went with a guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 